Well, good morning, everyone. I hope you're all well. Uh, I want to welcome you to an exciting new project for uh, Seattle and King County. You know, these are unprecedented times in which we're living. And here in King County, we are fighting a global pandemic that has made thousands of people seriously ill and taken over 500 lives. We're doing all we can to fight this pandemic, to fight this disease, and we will not stop until this threat to our community is eliminated. We've paid particular attention in this fight to congregate settings, uh, to our detention facilities, to homeless shelters, to uh, long-term care facilities, places where people live in close proximity because these are the places where outbreaks can and have spread quickly. Our public health strike teams have worked with long-term care facilities across the region to deploy infection controls and the impact uh, has been staggering. Residents, employees, visitors to long-term care facilities you see uh, compromise some 60 or comprise some 63 percent of COVID related deaths in King County. So that explains why our strike teams are going in, helping with the protocols that these facilities need, helping with the testing. Uh, we've deployed them to uh, shelters for the homeless across the region. We've deployed them to uh, long-term care facilities, and we've made extraordinary efforts to move residents living in these congregate settings into arrangements with more space, more ability to keep things clean, more ability to prevent the spread of disease. We've created isolation and quarantine and recovery centers to ensure that everyone who needs a safe place to rest and to recover can have one. We've opened additional space in King County buildings. We've moved more than 600 people, uh, particularly those who are vulnerable because of age or underlying health conditions, from congregate settings into hotels. And today, we are able to add the Elliott Avenue modular project to our COVID response. It's on county-owned land right here in Interbay. This project is going to offer on-site case management, meals, and connections to health and to behavioral health care. This place, uh, the buildings were originally designed to house 72 people. What we've done is reconfigure it so that we will start with 45 to 50 people to provide the maximum ability to prevent the spread of disease, to keep the guests safe and to keep our staff safe. And we're going to stagger the, the, the services that are provided. So we'll stagger the serving of meals and the counseling sessions and the access to things like the laundry and the showers so that we can protect everyone. I want to let you know as well that pets are welcome here. On your way in, you passed an area over here that you can see it has uh, wood chips or bark on the ground. That is the dog run uh, for folks who are staying here who have pets. This has been a long-standing goal of ours to, to test the use of modular construction, of modular buildings, uh, and to use it for the kinds of uh, facilities we need to help people who are struggling in our community. Uh, this uh, is an, a great opportunity for us because we're able to use this site that the county owns, and when eventually we need to develop this site, put it to another purpose, we can pick up these structures and relocate them to another piece of available land and continue our work. With us today are representatives from Emmons Design, from Third Place Design, from Whitley Evergreen in Marysville who manufactured the units. And I'm also pleased that Bill Hollerman and his team from Catholic Community Services, uh, who have been with us since the beginning of this project, will be the on-site service provider here, and they're here with us today. They're an extraordinary organization. They're dedicated to serving individuals and families in need across the county, and we are very grateful for their partnership. I'm also grateful for the compassion and understanding of the people of Queen Anne and of Magnolia and of Interbay. 
Those communities have been meeting with King County, they've been meeting with Catholic Community Services to negotiate a good neighbor agreement to ensure health and safety for all. So I want to thank you for working with us and for helping those who have so little that they can call their own. Today, we're also joined by uh, Council Member Jean Cole Wells from the King County Council. Uh, she's right over here. You'll recognize her immediately, along with everyone else in their uh, mask. Uh, Jean, Jean's district is, is here, and we really appreciate all the support that you've provided, not just for this project, but for our countywide work to protect those who are most in need at this time. The shelter will offer safety and it will offer dignity, not just a place to sleep at night, but 24-7 services and supports to help residents rebuild their health and rebuild their lives. We know we need many different resources, many kinds of resources to battle this virus and to keep people safe. Well, the completion of Elliott Avenue gives us an important new resource and I think a model as well that we can learn from and follow uh, as we continue to build out to fight this pandemic and to fight the, the longer term challenge of homelessness. I want to thank everyone who has helped make today possible and uh, certainly at the head of that list is the mayor of the city of Seattle who helped us get this cited and up and running and has been a tremendous partner through this unprecedented challenge, Jenny Durkin, Mayor Durkin. Thank you very much, Dow. I want to thank you and everyone at King County for your amazing partnership, not just through this pandemic, but throughout my term as mayor. Um, I'm glad to see everyone in masks and following the directive. I'm able to take mine off because you're socially distanced, but it's really important to follow the directive of Jeff Duchin, our public health advisor, to make sure that we're doing all we can to keep ourselves safe and our neighbors safe. Today is really an important event. Uh, from the very first moment that I learned about the positive COVID-19 in King County and was able to talk to Executive Constantine and then meet with the governor, from the very first day we were talking about how do we continue and increase our ability to protect our most vulnerable communities. We knew we were facing a daunting task. This is a voracious virus that has shown what it can do to a community. We saw it in Italy, we saw it in New York. And when we came together, we knew we had to do a number of things as a community. We had to pull together, we had to speak with one voice, and we had to let our residents know what they could do to keep themselves safe and to keep others safe. And so we did that. Um, and we have flattened the curve in King County, but as we learned this week, we are not out of the woods. We are far from out of the woods. And so we know that this, that almost 95% of the people in King County and Seattle have not been exposed to this virus. It's good news because it shows that we've done what we were asked to do, to break apart, to stay at home. But it also makes us so much more vulnerable because as we come together and reopen our society and our community, the chance for the virus to spread is significant. And we know that those communities that are most vulnerable are most at risk for the virus. And that is true of our neighbors who are experiencing homelessness. Throughout my time as mayor, I could not have asked for a better partner than Dow Constantine on coming up with a consolidated way to deal with this crisis in our community. We together were able to sign a historic agreement to have a regional authority to deal with homelessness. We still work towards that goal and we'll be setting that up. But when this pandemic hit, we knew one of our first obligations was to accelerate all we could do to keep our most vulnerable neighbors safe. And so with the county, they were citing a quarantine and isolation facilities. We were standing at more shelters so that we could de-intensify the shelters we had. We're doing more to bring people inside. And today at Elliott, a thing, a, a program that has been underway for many months now is going to become reality. And I too want to thank Catholic Community Services, but all of the providers who every day are showing up trying to help the people experiencing homelessness. They truly are on the front lines trying to help our most vulnerable. We know as a region and as a city, 
We have not done enough to bring our neighbors inside, and we will continue on that quest as a region to try to deal with that issue. But today is something to celebrate. It's a concrete way to say that we truly do believe that we have a shared responsibility, a shared community, and together we can beat this pandemic, but only if we work and do it together. And now I'd like to introduce Leo Floor of King County, who is leading the way and I think leading the tour on this. Thank you very much. All right, good afternoon and welcome. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, happy to uh, answer any of those questions. Uh, and other than that, we would love to show you around uh, because we're excited about the people we're gonna be able to help here. So any questions? So the question was, uh, was this underway before uh, we began to respond as a community to the COVID emergency? We have been uh, planning at this site, working with the community. We had already actually uh, ordered and worked with the designers for the modular buildings. Uh, but this use that we're talking about here is absolutely a reaction to uh, the really urgent need that we have to pr pr uh, provide people with the ability to implement public health guidance get far enough apart so that they can stay healthy and then be in a place that affords them the dignity to both recover and then to move on to housing. Places like this, the other modular units in North Seattle, um, and even almost, yeah, permanent. So the folks who will be coming here initially are coming from a uh, congregate shelter and they happen to be among those who are sheltered, the homeless folks who are sheltered, uh, among the most vulnerable people who are older who have underlying health conditions. This is an opportunity to get people uh, to a much, much safer environment in the short term. Uh, in the long term, obviously, we're going to need this kind of facility just to fight the uh, pandemic for many months, if not years. Uh, and after that, uh, there's an obvious conversation with the city and the community about how we continue to uh, get value from this remarkable kind of innovation in in uh, temporary housing. Uh, but I will say that you know the the work we've done to move people out of the, the the congregate settings and into hotels has been remarkably successful in terms of preventing the spread of the virus. Uh, we continue to test in those uh, relocated shelters that are in hotels or uh, will be in facilities like this. And we find very little, if any, transmission of the disease. We know that in these congregate settings, whether they're long-term care facilities, homeless shelters, or jails, if you're not incredibly vigilant, you're likely to have runaway infections before you know it. And so I'm, I'm really pleased that we've found a model that seems to work. Uh, we obviously had to try some things at the outset. Some have worked, some have been less successful, and now we, we we know that this kind of approach will help us defeat, not not only among the homeless population, but uh, help us defeat this virus countywide. Uh, are you going to continue with leasing the hotel rooms? You know the mayor of Renton has shown some concern about the lease and would like to have that up in these 90 days. It's over at Red Lion, are you planning to extend the release, leases of these hotel rooms? Yes. I had a long conversation with the mayor of Renton who has worked really hard to uh, uh, make sure that we can accommodate people who otherwise would be in congregate, congregate facilities and do it in a way that has the least impact to his community. They have some concerns that I think are real concerns about uh, individuals who are, who are acting up in their community or, or uh, wandering off from the site. And so we're going to deal with those specific concerns. Uh, I've charged Leo here, who's the head of our Department of Community and Human Services, who's working directly with the mayor to address those. But the fact is that in that facility, as of last Friday, we've tested 177 of the residents for the coronavirus. And if I'm to understand correctly, we had how many infections out of that 177 tests? Zero. Zero. The answer was zero. Uh, and that is because we've gotten people out of the 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 congregate settings into their individual rooms with their own bathrooms with the ability to stay away from one another it is a real benefit to the entirety of our community so yes we're going to continue leasing hotels and we're going to implement all the measures we need to implement to make sure that they have uh, only positive impacts on their communities where they're sited we actually have a unified approach we're looking to use all tools that we can 
We know that um, following CDC guidance, the first step was to de-intensify our congregate settings and to move people into facilities so there could be more room. That has shown and proven to be, for those people, a, a, it's had its effect. We're working with the county and with the co-lead program to determine if there's other outlets we have for people. So there is no or here. We are taking every approach we can um, and, and adding significant additional financial resources from the city to make sure that we're bringing as many people inside as we can. I want to follow up on something that Matt asked about the mayor of Renton. Mayor of Renton is a friend, um, as are a number of the mayors of the other cities in King County. But I want to make it really clear. When we move forward on a regional approach to homelessness, it has got to be a regional approach. And we look at the data today, only about 40% of the people that the city of Seattle is supporting who are experiencing homelessness were living in Seattle when they became homeless. Hundreds of people that we are spending resources on, the Seattle taxpayers, were living in Renton. Hundreds were living in other cities in King County. So we cannot continue to treat people as if they are not part of our community. We are all in this together. We will only get through it if we are together. And so rather than talking about where we can move, quote, those people, we should all be talking about how we get the resources to help our neighbors, our brothers, and our sisters who are experiencing homelessness. This is not Renton versus Seattle or Seattle versus any city. This is all of us coming together to help the most vulnerable, whether those are people experiencing homelessness or our seniors who are living in long-term care facilities. We have got to beat this virus and we will only do it together. Thank you. The CDC guidance, guidelines and our guidance made very clear that we would do our number one priority would be outreach to people experiencing homelessness, to provide them hygiene, to provide them information, and to try to bring them inside. But if there are areas where there is a public safety or public health threat, we are also trying to mitigate against that threat. In the Ballard Commons, unfortunately, there was a dual threat. There was both the because of the intensity of the community living there. There was a threat for COVID itself because there was gathering um, and we were unable through 30 days of outreach to mitigate against that. We also had a hepatitis A outbreak that was centered in that community. It was one block from one of the only stores open for that community and one block from two different senior communities who have had a significant COVID outbreak. We spent 30 days working with the people in that community and offered every single person an opportunity to come inside. We will continue to put humanity first and compassion first, but we also have to have, we have some cognizance and work for the public safety considerations when we're in the middle of a global pandemic where the clear guidance is to stop people from gathering and to keep people so they can't spread the virus. Thank you. We, every, we work ex extensively before we're moving people for public safety or public health reasons. We're working on an ongoing basis to offer people the opportunity to come inside. As people know, one of the, the truths is that people have the right to choose where they are and we cannot force absent some other reason to move people inside. And so we do our best and we will continue to do our best and we will make offers to and find room for everybody that we, we, uh, we try to relocate and that will continue to be our policy. We want to put compassion first, but it has to work also with public health and public safety in the middle of a global pandemic.